Hello and welcome to Random Fandom Chats. I'm Dee Dee. I'm Tandra. And this is Annabeth. Here we talk about anything and anything fandom related, sci-fi, fantasy, from books, TV shows, movies, Comics. games. And today we're going to be talking about Harry Potter and the Prisoner of Azkaban. Now I'm actually kind of glad that this was the first Harry Potter one that we pulled out because this is probably my favorite book out it of is the my, series. Yeah, it's it is my favorite out of the series. So, although it's kind of interesting because we, we were talking about it a little bit this last week because you know we knew it was our next topic and we have a lot of topics and things we we talk about with with the Harry Potter series mm -hmm. and the universe. This one is a little harder because we do like it so yeah. much. <laughs> I mean, like, in the other ones, we talk a lot about things that we did or didn't like about the book or whatever, but this or what one she thought, is our favorite. Yeah, you know, what she thought she did well, what she thought she was bad at, or, you know, mm -hmm. what, you know, what, she, what she, you know, J.K. Rowling was really good at or really bad at. Mm -hmm. This book, I think, wh why do you think it's your favorite? I think it's probably my favorite because... It's the most compelling story-wise to me because we found out a lot more about Harry's past, a lot more about his family and his parents, I think. And I also liked how this was kind of the more mature turning point in the series, I felt like. I felt like, because the first two books are definitely good, and even four children's books are pretty mature. But this one, Harry's now 13 years old. He's suddenly got a lot more of adult things on his mind, at least for a 13-year-old. And I just really felt like it was probably the maturity turning point. And from here on in, the books just started getting more and more mature as they progress. I also like the hopefulness in this book. Because so many, I mean, obviously the first two also have that. Mm -hmm. I mean, he defeats Voldemort in the first book. And, you know, and so, yeah, things are going to be mm -hmm. good. And, and so they all have that to a point. But this one... He finds out he has a godfather, mm -hmm. and somebody, you know, he can maybe, hopefully get away from the Dursleys, at least for a few seconds he thinks so, or a few yeah. minutes. Yeah. Um, but he also knows that things will be better at the Dursleys, even when he knows he can't get away from them, because he does have this person on his side now. Uh-huh, right. And so there's a little bit more of a good feeling, well, you know, now something he, good going his way, finally. Well, now he finally has more of a parental figure. Yeah, because somebody he can I'm, turn to. Right, because before that, I mean, yeah, Dumbledore was... Kind of that, sort of, but not really. really. Especially not by this point. Yeah, not yet. But yeah. and and now he has that fatherly figure, and now and now he has he not only has Sirius as his godfather, but also has you know Remus Lupin as well, right? Who's like kind of like a favorite uncle type. Well, and it's also cool because it it gives him somebody to connect with his parents. Because mm -hmm. up to right. this point all he's had Snape, which has been a horrible connection with his parents. Well, but not, not uh, even that, because he knows that, like they hated each dad, other, but that they was They hated it. each other, but that was it. Right. He didn't know, know anything so else So at this point he didn't have a whole lot of connection with his parents, because Hagrid didn't I mean, he knew, he knew them fairly well from being in the Order of the Phoenix together, obviously, but... But not, he never really heard right. a lot of stories about them. He didn't have a lot of what they were had, like in school. He had people or, talk about them and praise about Lily and James Potter and all this, but he didn't really have anybody who could really make Lily and James human for him. Right. I don't and think. so I think that's great that now he has that connection with Lupin and with... And yes. they were, you know, somebody that was so close to his parents, mm -hmm. especially his dad... And so that was really cool. I also, I liked that they finally are showing Harry as possibly being a really good wizard because he's mm -hmm. learning the Patronus charm, which is and supposed it's really to be coming really through difficult. that yes, he does have a lot of just innate magical talent. Because before this, they almost made him seem like he's just ordinary. A wizard, but kind of ordinary, because like he like got out of trouble from Voldemort, but a lot of that was. I mean, in Chamber of Secrets, obviously, he helped defeat the Basilisk and everything, and that showed his bravery, bravery a little bit, but a lot of times it was, but like, a lot of skill on his side. Yeah, it never really shows wizarding skill, and at this point, it's actually starting to show that he mm -hmm. actually does have some wizarding skill, too. Mm -hmm. Not just luck, not just that he's the chosen one, basically. Right. And so I think that part of it makes the book really good. I... And, of course, it's got the great humor, you know, blowing up Aunt Marge, you know. Uh -huh. And then Ron's like, oh, yeah, if I blew up Aunt Marge, you know. Yeah. They'd have to dig me up first to expel me because Mom would have killed me. Right, right. So it has the great humor in it. I love the time turner idea. Mm -hmm. I love... Obviously. Yeah. <laughs> I love going back, the idea of being able to go back in time. And, and one of the things we had talked about was how she sometimes 
it's interesting to see how she seemed to know where this where the story was going. Oh yes, it's very clear that J.K. Rowling had a lot of this already mapped out in her head. Even that's coming in the future for many right, books. She had in the, the past, world. the present, and the future just really well. It seemed like she really had it. Head. But just this book in general, weaving in the side story with uh, Buckbeak. And, mm -hmm. and that whole thing where, you know, it seems like just kind of a side little part of the story. And then, then all of a sudden it becomes, becomes really becomes important. And, you know, really series intricate. escaping. And, and so I think she's really good at doing that. She's really mm -hmm. good at, at having seemingly... She really is. ...minute things because, become really important. Because it was obvious that, or maybe it wasn't as intentional as it might be, but it's pretty obvious that she even intended Scabbers to always be Peter Pettigrew in the end, because in the first book she mentions how Peter Pettigrew's, or how Scabbers is missing a finger. And just like, maybe mm. she decided later on that she would insert that and just like, maybe, but I think the she bags. knew. I think she knew. Well, I think she knew that she just was like Trelawney showing up in this book and then mm -hmm. you know time. talking you know and she has the prophecy about you know he's going to join his master you know by the end of tonight and all that meaning of course one tail um and of course harry's not sure what she's meaning at he's this like, point <laughs> and then at the end he's kind of putting it all together and he's talking to dumbledore about it and he goes oh well that makes two so we already knew that she was the one who had the prophecy about harry and voldemort and voldemort and all that but but we don't know that yet i mean she yeah, we don't know that in the fifth book but she obviously knew it and she had already put her in mm -hmm. there and yeah. already done that. So I think that was pretty cool. Too. I, just the fact that she had all this woven... I mean, she may have done some minor changes, especially the farther you get into the mm -hmm. series. But, I, but really, I think I think she had a lot of this I already do. mapped I, out. I think right? she because she worked on this series for years before she even wrote the first book and sent it yeah. to the publishers. So I think she, she had it in her head. So I think that's really cool. Mm -hmm. And you really start seeing these connections a lot more in this book. I think that's probably also the reason why I like this book so much, is you start seeing these connections a lot Well, more. and it's really cool because when you reread the books, uh, you know, we love reading them, listening mm -hmm. to them on, on, on audiobook. Um, audiobook. The Jim Dale versions are just way awesome to listen to when you're cleaning house or doing dishes or whatever. Mm -hmm. It's just great. And they're fun to re-listen to because you pick up on things and you're like, oh, yeah, it's yeah, almost that, like... That fits in over here. Yeah, it's and, like, I've probably read this book at least six or seven times now, maybe even more, and I'm still thinking of new things when I'm rereading it. You still find something else, and yeah. you go, oh, wow, that, that fits in with, you know, whatever mm -hmm. over here. Yeah. Wow, that, that makes sense with that. And so, yeah, but it definitely is my favorite of the series, and I do think... Mostly it's because of the whole, because so many of the others, especially the later ones, they get darker. They, do <laughs> and they get, very, they get dark. very dark and, you know, there's more killing, there's more death, there's more, more, more you know, a lot of bad things happen. And mm -hmm. at least in this one, most of what happens is pretty good. Yeah. I mean, you know, even the bad things turn out to be good, mm -hmm. you know, in the long run. So I think for the most part, you know, it's, it's a much more hopeful part of the series, which is always kind of fun for mm -hmm. me. But, you know. Yeah. Uh, another thing that... Um, I had noticed, uh, oh, I'm trying to remember, because uh, I've been rereading this recently, and there was something else that I noticed that J.K. Rowling even had uh, the whole backstory with Lily and Snape planned out. There was something that I noticed in one of the chapters, something Dumbledore mentioned about Snape, or, S oh, oh, I remember what it was. Um, it's when Harry is facing the Dementors, and of course he can hear his mother's final words in his head, and he can also hear Voldemort at one point, and he keeps saying, step aside, girl, and I remember when I f first read the book, when before the last book came out, and we found out all this history about Snape and Lily, I always kind of found it weird that Voldemort kept telling Lily to step aside. It's like, yeah, why, why didn't he just kill her? Why didn't he just kill her? But J.K. Rowling already knew that um, at, at that point, Voldemort had already promised Snape that if he could, he would try to spare Lily because he knew that Snape was right. in love with Lily. Yeah, well, and it just shows how stupid Voldemort is. What mother in her right mind right. is ever going to move aside so you could kill her kid? Right. You know, that's like, he has no concept of real human attachment. No, he's just doing something because he promised a, you know, a servant. A servant. He's like, oh, you want the woman? Okay, I'll try to spare her if I can. Right. But yeah, it, I just found that really interesting, and that's the first time I've noticed that in this. But like I said, that's the first time I had really pieced that together. 
in my head, it's like, oh, she already knew this whole history with Snape and Lily. Right. So that's pretty cool. Yeah. So, yeah, definitely, if you haven't read them in a while or, you know, never read them more, you definitely De- Definitely. Yeah. Harry Potter is definitely one of those books that you can reread quite a bit. Yeah. Well, are we ready to pick up the next topic? I think we are. Alrighty. Let's see here. Alrighty, let's pick green. Dark Shadows, the TV show. Oh, that's that's a fun one. Yeah, yeah. that's gonna be an interesting one. Because so many people don't, you know, think of it. They they think of the newer probably oh, movie, which you know, we won't go into. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Well, thanks for for watching. If you like this video, please consider giving it a thumbs up or subscribe if you like what we do. Uh, also, feel free to leave comments in the section below. And tell all your friends about us, and we'll see you next time.